Welcome to Remote Learning. For this lesson, we'll look at the character of Macbeth. So what are we learning today, guys? So in this lesson, we'll explore the character of Macbeth and how he changes throughout the course of the play. So why are we learning this? So it's important that we understand and have an overall knowledge of Macbeth's timeline within the play, as it will strengthen our analysis. We'll also look at Macbeth's character arc and show how he changes from a brave warrior to a desperate coward. So how does this fit into our learning journey? So this is our second lesson on Macbeth. So it's a good idea that before this lesson you have completed the previous. Because next lesson we'll focus on the character of Lady Macbeth. So our learning objective today guys is to identify how the character of Macbeth changes throughout the course of the play and to understand why he does this. We'll apply this knowledge in the independent task. So first will be our starter, where I'll give you five questions to answer and test your prior knowledge. Then I will lead and introduce new learning. Then after this, I will set you off on an independent task and then give you feedback. So as this is a video, the feedback section of this lesson will be given to you at the start of the next lesson. So here are five questions for you to complete guys. So again, it is necessary to complete the previous lesson on the plot of Macbeth. So ensure you have completed that lesson before continuing this lesson. So please pause the video here and unpause when you have finished. So let's look at question one. So at the start of the play, who does Macbeth and Banquo meet on their way home? So at the start of the play, Macbeth and his best friend Banquo meet three witches. Okay, number two, where is the play set? So as you will know, Macbeth is loosely based on true events in medieval Scotland. So as the king at the time was James I of England or James VI of Scotland, this choice was clearly made to please James I. Okay, number three, what is predicted about Macbeth at the start of the play? So the witches predict that Macbeth will become the Thane of Cawdor and become King of Scotland. They also predict that Banquo's descendants will become kings. So number four, who plots to kill King Duncan and why? So it is Lady Macbeth who plots to kill King Duncan because she wants power for her husband and therefore herself. So remember, women at this time had no power and were the property of their husband. So the fact that a woman was plotting to murder would have instantly turned the audience against this character. So Shakespeare is telling his audience that Lady Macbeth is a character we are not meant to like. So the last question, number five, how is King Duncan killed? So Macbeth stabs King Duncan to death and Lady Macbeth frames the servants for the crime. So in the script, this scene is omitted, so we don't see it. We can sur surmise here that Shakespeare thought the aftermath and the build up to the murder is far more important than the deed itself. So Shakespearean language can be difficult to decipher and translate into modern English. And that's what I'm going to do now. So in this quotation, a captain is explaining to King Duncan of all of Macbeth's brave deeds. So let's begin. So the first line for brave Macbeth, well, he deserves that name. So here the captain is, is praising Macbeth's bravery and suggests that he deserves the name Brave Macbeth. So let's look at line two. So disdaining fortune with his brandished steel. So here it describes Macbeth's disdaining fortune. So laughing in disregard of his own safety, but also implying a prowess or skill with a sword. Okay, line three, we have which smoked with bloody execution. So this could be a metaphor or could have a more literal interpretation showing that Macbeth has hot blood on his sword. And remember we're in Scotland, which tends to have harsher winters. So blood could literally be steaming from his sword. So in line four, we have a simile like Valor's minion carved out his passage. So, th so this is suggesting that Macbeth is chopping skillfully through his enemy, like the personification of Valor or Honor. So let's look at line five. So it says, till he faced the slave. So the slave here refers to MacDonald, the former Thane of Cawdor, 
showing that Macbeth faces the other Thane himself in battle. So in line 6, which never shook hands nor bade farewell to him, again shows that Macdonald didn't have time to do anything until in the next line, unseamed him from the nave to the chops. So this is quite a graphic description, essentially explaining how Macbeth chopped Macdonald in half from the navel or the belly to the chops, meaning the cheeks. So this demonstrates how physically powerful Macbeth is, but also how ruthless he is. So lastly, we have line eight and fixed his head upon the battlements. So here, Macbeth fixed Madonwall's head to the battlements, which is at the top of a castle wall. So this symbolizes his power and warning everyone else that sees it, what will happen if they rebel against the king. So as we've established previously, Macbeth is a brave and successful soldier in King Duncan's army. So at the beginning of the play, he meets three witches who prophesies that he will become king of Scotland. So prophesize means to tell someone what will happen in the future. So although Macbeth is a good soldier, he is tempted by power and he's ultimately manipulated by women. So notice the manipulation is only by women. So Lady Macbeth and the witches which is possibly referencing King James I's own difficult relationships with women. So Macbeth is married to Lady Macbeth, who convinces him he should do whatever it takes to fulfil the witch's prophecy and become king. So Macbeth's ambition takes over everything else and he does whatever it takes to gain more power and retain it. So his thirst for power overshadows the love he has for his wife and the honour he had at the start of the play. So However, Macbeth is a confused character and at times he questions and doubts himself. So arguably, he feels guilty over his actions, which at times haunts him. So this is particularly evident when he mourns Lady Macbeth in the famous lines, she should have died hereafter. Where would have been time for such a word? So in your notes, please ensure you have a secure knowledge of each of these terms as these are key to describing the tragedy of Macbeth. Okay guys, so now I'll briefly look at how Macbeth changes over the course of the play. So in Act 1, Macbeth is a respected general, a devoted husband, and the king is very pleased with his actions in battle. So next, his ambitious wife, Lady Macbeth, convinces him to kill King Duncan. So an audience at this time would have considered Macbeth a weak character, as he has allowed himself to be influenced by a woman. So his character would therefore be disliked, as he is not conforming to the stereotype of a strong man. So next we see Macbeth struggling with the idea of killing King Duncan. So there's a famous scene in Macbeth where he sees a floating dagger in the air. So this hallucination, he claims, points the way to Duncan's bedchamber. But he talks to himself about it and thinks that he shouldn't kill the king. But he gradually convinces himself that this is the right thing to do. So after killing the king and becoming king himself, Macbeth's mental state deteriorates. So he's plagued with paranoia and guilt and begins to see more hallucinations and he can't sleep very well. So lastly, after ordering the death of Macduff's innocent family, Macbeth's character changes to an even more ruthless one. So he starts to lose his humanity, becomes a tyrant, and he's desperate to retain his power. So the audience realizes, if they haven't already, that Macbeth's downfall started when he listened to the witches at the start, and was only made worse when Lady Macbeth's ambition makes her force her husband to kill for political gain. So an audience at this time would expect a person who associates himself with witches and kills the king to be doomed anyway. So they expect them to be justly punished for their actions. So therefore an audience would know as soon as Macbeth kills the king that bad things would happen to him as a result. So now consolidate your knowledge of the character of Macbeth by filling in the worksheet uploaded on Satchel 1 or Teams. So you might not have enough room in the boxes, so feel free to use another piece of paper or open a new document. So be creative as you like. I would recommend that you spend no more than 20 minutes on this and I'll give you feedback next lesson and address misconceptions. Please ensure your work is saved and emailed to your English teacher where possible. If you are writing on paper, 
please keep these safely stored for when you return to school.